welcome to Double Entry Bookkeeping Using T-Accounts Part 2, our third module in our Bookkeeping Basics course. I am Kathy Grosskirth and I am your facilitator for this module and for this course. In this lesson, we will continue using T-Accounts to demonstrate the concepts of Double Entry Bookkeeping. Remember in our previous lesson, we worked with the assets, liabilities, and owner's equity accounts, which are our balance sheet accounts. With this lesson, we're going to also add transactions using revenues and expenses, the two accounts that appear on our income statement. But before we even do that, we're going to revisit some key concepts and key terms, which will help you do the next few exercises. Here we review the accounting equation. The accounting equation is the foundation of a sound double entry bookkeeping system. The accounting equation simply states that assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity as shown here in the equation. With each and every transaction recorded into our bookkeeping records, everything must remain in balance. And hopefully that is starting to make sense. It should with these next few exercises. And here we revisit T-Accounts. A T-Account is exactly that. It's an account that resembles the letter T. The account name is written above the horizontal line of the T, while data is recorded on either side of the vertical line according to these rules that write for balance sheet accounts. And hopefully by now you're starting to understand which have normal debit balances and which have normal credit balances. It should come to you as we work on these next few exercises. Here below is the accounting equation combined with these rules, and on the next slide, we add the income statement accounts. And now it's time to add income statement accounts to the mix. T account rules for income statement accounts are as follows. For revenues, you record increases on the right, and revenue accounts have a normal credit balance. For expenses, you record increases on the left, and expenses have a normal debit balance. As we go through these exercises, it's a good idea to have the first two pages of your handout handy, as well as the chart of accounts handout in the introductory module. That way you can refer to those as needed as we go through the exercises in this lesson. Now we will revisit the rules of debit and credit. Assets and expense accounts have a normal debit balance. Liabilities, owner's equity, and revenue accounts have a normal credit balance. In our double entry bookkeeping system, debit simply means left and credit simply means right, as depicted here. This holds true in all circumstances regardless of whether an account has a normal debit or credit balance. When you follow these rules for recording business transaction data, your accounts will remain in balance. Please do not read too much into what debit means or what credit means. Just remember simply that debit means left and credit means right. And finally, we're going to review the steps to record data in the T accounts. The first step is to identify which accounts are affected. In the exercises, we will be using just two accounts per transaction. This will simplify the learning process. The second step is to identify the account type for each, whether it's an asset, liability, owner's equity, revenue, or expense, and note if they increase or decrease. Remember, as in the previous module, we will have some accounts that will both increase, we will have some accounts that will both decrease, and then we will have others that will increase and decrease. The third step is to determine which account is debited, which account is credited, and the amounts for each. When you're working with two accounts, one is debited and then the other one has to be credited. That's the way it works. The final and the fourth step is to record the data on the proper side of the T accounts as appropriate. Are you ready for transaction one? Good, let's go ahead and get started. 
We are now ready for transaction one, recording cash income received from services rendered. We are now in the month of December where we have opened our doors to our first customers. On December 15th, 20XX, Sarah Jennings recorded $5,000 received from clients paying cash for her bookkeeping services. Our revenue account is named Service Income. We will now show the accounts affected by these receipts. And on the next slide, we will go through the first three steps for recording this transaction. We will now go through the first three steps for recording transaction one, which is recording cash income from services rendered. What are the two accounts affected? If you read back through the synopsis presented, you will see that cash and service income are the two counts affected. What we did is we received cash and that cash was the result of income earned or revenues earned. Number two, what account types and do they increase or decrease? The cash account, as we should know by now, is an asset type. It increases by $5,000 because we receive cash from paying clients. Service income is a revenue account. That's one of the new accounts that we're working with in this module. We had an increase in $5,000 in revenue because we have earned that revenue from paying clients. Number three. Which account is debited, which account is credited, and how much for each? Remember, like I said, if you have an account that you debit, you have to credit the other one. Cash has a normal debit balance. It increases, so it will be debited for $5,000. Service income has a normal credit balance, and it increases, so we will credit service income for $5,000. On the next slide, we actually record the transaction. And now we're ready for step four, recording of transaction one. First, we're going to record $5,000 on the debit side of the cash T account as shown here. Remembering to put the date, the amount, and for now we're going to continue with our plus sign and the word debit underneath. That'll help you internalize which side is debit and which side is credit. After you do that, we're going to record the $5,000 on the credit side of the services income T account. Again, remembering to put the date, the amount, and for now the plus sign and the word credit underneath. As you can see by the diagram below, the accounts are still in balance. And on the next slide, we're going to talk about the impact of transaction one on our records. As we do that, refer to this diagram in your handout as we do that. And now we discuss the impact of transaction one on our records. As you refer to the diagram, note that the $20,000 total assets came from our previous module. When you add the $5,000 cash, you see that we have $25,000 in total assets as of December the 15th. Our owner's equity, we started out with a balance of $20,000. When you add the $5,000 net income to that owner's equity amount, you get $25,000 in total owner's equity. Total assets of $25,000 equal the total owner's equity of $25,000. Now for simplicity's sake, we are showing the total asset dollar amounts here, and these figures came from the balance sheet covered in our previous lesson. It's also important to note that revenues increase owner's equity, and our net income equals revenues at this point, so the $5,000 show up as net income in the accounting equation on the previous slide. We've added the net income amount in this transaction to show the accounting equation remains in balance, whereas ordinarily we would not integrate the net income or net loss in the owner's equity until year-end financial statements are prepared. Now, starting with transaction three, we will break out the amounts in the property account so that you can see them. Now on to transaction two. And now we're ready for transaction two, which is recording credit income from services rendered. On December 18th, 20XX, Bookkeeping Clean and Simple earns $1,500 of service income from various clients who were extended credit. This is monies owed to our business, and when using the accrual system of bookkeeping, 
It is required to recognize earnings at the time they are earned. So we have created an asset account called accounts receivable to track these earnings which are owed to us. And in the next slide, we'll cover the first three steps of recording this transaction. And now we go through the first three steps of recording transaction two, recording credit income from services rendered. Step one, what are the accounts affected? The two accounts affected are accounts receivable and service income. Step two, what are the account types and do they increase or decrease? Accounts receivable is an asset type. It increases by $1,500. Service income is a revenue type. It also increases by $1,500. Step three, which account is debited, which account is credited, and how much for each? Accounts receivable has a normal debit balance, so accounts receivable will be debited for $1,500. Service income has a normal credit balance, so service income will be credited for $1,500. On the next slide is when we actually record the transaction. And now we actually do step four, record transaction two. We first record the $1,500 on the debit side of the accounts receivable T account as shown here. Next, we record the $1,500 on the credit side of the service income T account also as shown here. The accounts are in balance as you can see by the diagram below. And on the next slide, we'll talk about the impact of transaction two on our records. And now we talk about the impact of transaction two on our records. As you can see, the accounts are still in balance as per the accounting equation as shown here and with the income statement equation also shown here. Assets increased by the $1,500 increase in accounts receivables owed to us by select clients. Our total assets equal $26,500 as of December the 18th. Our total owner's equity also equals $26,500. We have zero in total liabilities at this point. So right now our total assets equal our total owner's equity and liabilities. Also remember that the net income is only added to the owner's equity in these exercises to show that the accounting equation remains in balance. As we previously stated, we would not ordinarily integrate a net income or net loss in owner's equity until year-end financial statements are prepared, as we will discuss in the preparing financial statements session in our next module. Okay, now we're ready for transaction three. For transaction three, we record clients paying off some of their credit balances. On December 28, 20XX, a customer paid $500 toward their credit balance. On the next slide, we go into the first three steps of recording this transaction. And now let's go through the steps to record transaction three, recording partial payment of credit balances. Number one. Which accounts are affected? The two accounts that are affected are cash and accounts receivable. Number two, what are the account types and do they increase or decrease? Cash is an asset type and it will increase by $500. Accounts receivable is also an asset type. It will decrease by $500. Remember when you have two of the same type of account, one will increase and one will decrease. Number three, which account is debited, which account is credited, and how much for each? Cash will be debited for $500 since it's increasing. Accounts receivable will be credited for $500 since it will be decreasing. On the next slide, we will actually record the transaction. And now we actually record transaction three. First, we record $500 on the debit side of the cash T account as shown here. Next, we record $500 on the credit side of the accounts receivable T account also as shown here. Now, the next slide will show the accounts with the current totals. The accounts remain in balance as per the accounting equation, and we will also discuss the impact of this transaction on our records. 
Now we talk about the impact of transaction 3 on our records. As you can see, everything remains in balance in accordance to the accounting equation. Our cash increased by $500, but our accounts receivable decreased by $500, so our net change in assets is zero. The owner's equity account remains unchanged with a balance of $20,000, and our service income totals $6,500. So our assets of $26,500 equal our owner's equity and liabilities totaling $26,500. Now we're ready for transaction four. Now it's time to tackle transaction four where an owner takes a distribution of funds. On December 30th, 20XX. Sarah Jennings withdraws $1,000 from her business account. Now, sole proprietors do not usually issue themselves paychecks. Instead, they withdraw funds directly from the business. They track these withdrawals using what is known as a drawing account, which will name Sarah Jennings Drawing. At the end of the accounting cycle, the drawing account is closed out and the amounts are adjusted into the owner's equity account. A drawing account is a contra account which simply means that it's an account which offsets the main account. Increases in the drawing account are recorded in the debit left side of the T account, which is the opposite of recording increases in the owner's equity account. Those are recorded on the credit right side of the T account. On the next slide, we discuss the first three steps of recording this transaction. Now we will go into the first three steps of recording transaction four, owner takes a distribution of funds. Step one, which accounts are affected? The two accounts that are affected are cash and Sarah Jennings drawing. Step two, what are the account types and do they increase or decrease? Cash is an asset type and it will decrease by $1,000 since she's taking money out of the company. Sarah Jennings drawing, is an owner's equity contra account and it will increase by a thousand dollars. Step three, which account is debited, which account is credited, and how much for each. Sarah Jennings drawing will increase with a debit for a thousand dollars. The cash account will decrease with a credit for a thousand dollars. On the next slide we go through actually entering the transaction. Now we move on to step four, recording transaction four. First, we record $1,000 on the debit side of the Sarah Jennings Drawing T account, as shown here. Second, we record the $1,000 on the credit side of the cash T account, again shown here. The next slide shows the accounts with the current totals. The accounts remain in balance as per the accounting equation. And we will also discuss the impact of transaction four on our records on the next slide. As you can see in the diagram, our assets are decreased by $1,000 and our owner's equity is also decreased by the same $1,000. But the $1,000 is recorded in our contra account. The accounting equation remains in balance as per the accounting equation. Our cash has decreased by $1,000. Our owner's equity contra account has increased by the same amount, $1,000. Our owner's equity has technically decreased by $1,000, but we will not adjust for it until the end of our fiscal year when we close out our temporary accounts, revenues, and expenses. As you can see, everything remains in balance. And again, don't forget, the drawing account offsets the owner's equity account the creases are recorded on the debit left side of the T account, which is opposite of the owner's equity account, where increases are recorded on the credit right side of the T account. Hopefully this is all making sense to you. Now on to transaction five. Now let's tackle transaction five, buying professional insurance using a company credit card. On December 30th, 20XX, Sarah Jennings took out a business liability insurance policy and paid a $300 annual premium using an American Express rewards card she obtained for the business. 
Many businesses now are using credit cards to purchase items and services because they can accumulate rewards points that can be used for business expenses such as travel, supplies, or even cash back. Using a credit card for purchases, however, creates a liability which has to be paid at some point in the future, usually within a 30-day period. Now, why are we treating this insurance policy as an asset instead of an expense? It's because it's considered an asset of the business because the expenses will be spread out over the 12 months in a year. On the next slide, we begin the three steps in recording this transaction. Now it's time to go through the first three steps of recording transaction five. Number one, which accounts are affected? The two accounts that are affected are accounts payable, Amex credit card, and prepaid insurance. Step two, what are the account types and do they increase or decrease? Accounts payable Amex credit card is a liability type and it increases by $300. Prepaid insurance is an asset type and it increases by $300. Step 3. Which account is debited, which account is credited, and how much for each? The account's payable Amex credit card is credited for $300. The prepaid insurance account is debited for $300. On the next slide, we actually record this transaction. Now it's time to record transaction five. We start with recording $300 on the debit side of the prepaid insurance T account. Next, we record $300 on the credit side of the accounts payable Amex credit card T account. On the next slide, it shows the accounts with the current totals. The accounts remain in balance as per the accounting equation. We will also discuss the impact of transaction five on our records on the next slide. Now it's time to talk about the impact of transaction five on our records. As you can see in the diagram, the accounts are in balance. Assets have increased by $300 with the addition of prepaid insurance. Our liabilities, which were zero, have increased to $300. Our assets total $25,800. Our owner's equity totals $25,500. $25,800 is the total amount of liabilities plus owner's equity, which equals the amount of our assets, $25,800. The accounting equation remains in balance. Congratulations for making it this far. Now on to transaction six. Now it's time for transaction six, our final transaction in this module, payment of rent for December. On December 30th, 20XX, Sarah Jennings wrote a check for $1,000 to pay for monthly rent for office space. Normally rent is payable at the beginning of the month of occupancy, but for our example, the rent payment is due on the last day of the month. On the next slide, we discuss the first three steps in recording this transaction. Here are the first three steps to record transaction six, payment of rent for December. Step one, what are the two accounts affected? The two accounts affected are cash and rent expense. Step two, what are the account types and do they increase or decrease? Cash is an asset type, it will decrease by $1,000. Rent expense is an expense type, it will increase by $1,000. Step three, which account is debited, which account is credited, and how much for each. Cash will be credited for $1,000. Rent expense will be debited for $1,000. On the next slide, we will record this transaction. And now it's time for step four, the recording of transaction six. We will start by recording the $1,000 on the debit side of the rent expense T account, as shown here. Then we will record the $1,000 on the credit side of the cash T account shown here. The next slide will show the accounts with all the accounts totaled or footed. The accounts remain in balance as per the accounting equation. And we will also discuss the impact of this transaction on our records. 
And now we talk about the impact of transaction six on our records. As you can see, our cash has decreased by $1,000 and our expense has increased by $1,000 with the payment of the rent. Our cash balance is $22,000. All the other current balances in the assets have not changed. So our total assets equal $24,800. Total liabilities are still $300. Our total owner's equity, which includes our Sarah Jennings drawing, our service income, and our rent expense, is now totaled $24,500. Our liabilities plus owner's equity equal $24,800, which equal our assets of $24,800. Everything is still in balance. And we will actually use this diagram at the start of our next module. Congratulations, you've just completed Module 3, Double Entry Bookkeeping Using T-Accounts Part 2. You are now halfway through the Bookkeeping Basics course. Our next module is Preparing the Financial Statements. We will see you again soon.